Hummingbird, the new movie starring the Stath. So at the beginning of the film, um, he's a, you know he's a special ops guy, and then next thing we see, he's a derelict in London. How come? What's happening? Ah, well, no, no, no. Well, there's trauma. There's trauma involved. What sort of trauma? Well, the trauma, the, the trauma of battle, and, and again, things will reveal themselves as the as he relives the trauma through flashback. I can't but bother. Just tell me now. He's in. I can't tell you now because that's just giving away the film. So anyway, he's in Soho. He falls, literally falls into a swanky flat that he discovers is unoccupied, is lived in by an actor who's going to be in Los Angeles for a certain amount of months. So he decides to take on the identity of being somebody that lives oh. in that flat from which he can rebuild his life, he can seek the vengeance which he is seeking, and he can also play with his identity. Here's a clip. I know there's someone there because I saw you go in. I'm going to call the police. <sighs> Who are you? Damon said he was going to be in New York all summer. Um, Damon's boyfriend. One of them. He said I could use his flat while he was away. Are you a model? Sometimes. He didn't say anyone was going to be staying. Do you have his number in New York? No, he keeps himself very private. Pity. You could have called him. Do you have a number? <sighs> he doesn't give it to me. I guess I call him late at night. I'm Tracy. Joey. Joey Jones. Damon said I should stay here for the summer. Get my life back together. So that's what I'm going to do. So he passes himself off as this person's boyfriend so that he can live in the flat. He then, there's a, bit, there's a question later on when the, one of the characters says to him, are you exclusively gay? And he says, no, recently I found myself very attracted to nuns. And there is a whole sort of story going on about, indeed, about his, his relationship with a sister of mercy who has been, been working in a soup kitchen, which is where we see him at the beginning of the film. So the proper sister of mercy is not the sisters of mercy. No, not the sisters of mercy. No, no he's not did. standing in for Andrew Eldridge or whatever. <laughs> he's he not was, doing that. He was great, by the way. Yeah. Temple of Love? Yes, I, mean, I know how they were. In the Temple of Love, Love, Love. They were very much the Angry Turkey dance band, weren't they? That's what you had to do, you know. <laughs> so the ang angry Turkey. That was all the people that loved all those bands, did all the Angry Turkey I dance. interviewed him once and said, how come you did the, a remix of that track with Ofra Haza? You know, because that was a strange thing to get the Imnin Alu song mixed into uh, Temple of Love. And he gave a very explicit answer, but essentially it just meant that he fancied her. <laughs> that was, and that was the end of that. In the case of Hummingbird, by um, directed by uh, Stephen Knight, who uh, wrote uh, Eastern Promises, and one of the things with, with his writing, he, he does tend to sort of write very convoluted, twisty scripts in which the kind of plot contrivances don't quite add up. However, I'm a big fan of Jason Statham, partly because I think he's got you know a fantastic sort of polymorphously perverse appeal, partly because I think he's doing that classic thing of he knows what his uh, genre base is. You know, he comes from action movies. He's done all the transporter movies. And yet he's always trying to broaden his palette with a really, really sort of intelligent eye on, you know, how far can I push this in order for this to work? The film is beautifully shot, incidentally. It doesn't have the kind of standard CD Soho cliches. Um, yes, the, the people have talked about the plot being, you know, contrived and risible, something that, although it has all those genre cliches, like the idea of, you know, he's the outcast, the only person who understands him is a nun, he's posing as somebody's boyfriend, but in fact, and all those things are going on in it. And... I th as far as I'm concerned, I, th I continue to be impressed by Jason Statham. I mean, the film is not perfect by any means. It's got lots of problems. It's got, you know, some raggedy edges, but it, it's, it's having a bash at something. It's fairly ambitious. It's reaching at doing something more than just, I mean, you compare this, for example, to Snitch, in which you could equally say, well, you've got an action star attempting to you know, branch out into broader acting. And in fact, all that happens is that the people that want the action are bored by the acting, and the people that want the acting are dismayed by the action. In the case of Jason Statham, who I think is a very British icon, He's doing. He's attempting to broaden the palette, and it's not going to be his biggest success film ever. But as always, I found him enjoyable. And even when the film wasn't working, and even when it was, you know, ridiculous, it was ridiculous in a generic way, and it was doing some interesting stuff.